actually, apart from when I'm talking to journalists, I usually don't think about it much. <laughs> We're all vulnerable now. You know, and I think really I'm, I'm no more or less vulnerable than anyone else these days. No, there isn't really. I mean, I've been leading a perfectly ordinary life for years and years now. Now I'm just a writer going about his business, fortunately. I'd been in New York a couple of days before, but on that day I was in Houston, Texas. By comparison with what happened to me, this is a problem of an altogether different scale. I think bin Laden is, a, uh, is, is essentially a kind of cheap gangster, you know, and I don't think he's a very complex mind. His purpose, it seems to me, if there's a bottom line of his plan, it was to somehow end up in charge of Saudi oil. You know, I think that's, that's, what, he, that's what he thought was going to happen. And I think, essentially, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a sign of the limitations of his thinking that he miscalculated so badly. I mean, I think his belief was that after this attack, there would be a kind of general Muslim uprising. You know, America would roll over like the weak nation he believed it to be. And clearly, that's not happening anytime soon. A lot of people were trying to, to sort of finesse that point and to try and say it's about you know, terrorism and fanaticism and so on. And I said, yes, but you, know, you have to say it is also about Islam because that's the idea out of which this fanaticism comes. And OK, it's a perver perverted form of Islam. You know, it's a very extremist form of Islam that many Muslims, would, most Muslims, would reject. But to say it's not about Islam is to miss an important part of the explanation. In the Muslim world, there is a growing strand of highly fanatical thinking, which, grow, which I, in my view is largely created by the, the presence in many Muslim countries now of extremist religious schools. <laughs> You know, if you get people young and you, t you spend their entire growing up period telling them, you know, how to live and who the enemy is and why the enemy is so appalling and, you know, etc., it's not surprising that you then breed a generation of people who may be more capable of, of, of violent actions. A lot of British Muslim leaders, journalists, writers, you know, have been saying in the last year that it's no good anymore to not speak out against the fanatics because you don't, you know, there's a sort of feeling that you don't break ranks, you know, you don't criticize your own team in public. All of which I think people have begun to understand now that that's rubbish and that fanaticism is not something that can be defended. And I think there is beginning to be some more vocal uh, opposition from inside, the, as you say, the silent majority. But I think that majority needs to get a whole lot more vocal.